Do you really know how to read candlesticks? Hey everyone, welcome to Traders of the World. This is our fresh interview series where we dive into captivating tales from the financial market and chat with amazing guests. I am Matheus Massari and I am thrilled to be here. With me, I have Flavio Lemos. Hello world, I am Flavio Lemos, Director of Trader Brazil School. This year, our school is starting 23 years old. And I'm also author of some investment books and we are speaking English because we want to show inspire new traders all over the world. I hope you like it and subscribe to our channel. Awesome. I'm sure that we are going to have a great chat with our very special guest. Speaking of our guest today, he is widely known as the person who introduced the previously secret candlestick technique from the, to the Western world. He is the authority on his method of charting that has truly changed the way that traders look at price charts. Flavio, do you know him for a while, right? Yes, I first met him in 2003 at Las Vegas Money Show. And he later gave me the honor of participating in a live presentation at Expo Trader Brazil 2004, in which he explained Kenosik in a very simple way. Kenosik is a color TV and a bar charts, a black and white TV. There is also a funny story from when he came to the Expo Trader Brazil in 2004 at World Trade Center in Sao Paulo. He took me to the, this five-star hotel kitchen to show me the fruit he had eaten for breakfast. It turned out to be a smelly jackfruit, which he surprisingly loved. Also, he was one of the first to be awarded with the designation of Chartered Market Technician. He is a leading authority on candlesticks, the author of three essential books on the subject, Japanese Candlestick Charting Techniques, Beyond Candlesticks, and the Candlestick Course, which have been translated into 20 different languages. He has demonstrated his trading strategies to traders and analysts across multiple countries and international institutions, including the World Bank and the Federal Reserve. In addition, he is the president of CandleCharts.com, an education and advisory website. Please welcome Mr. Steve Neeson. Thank you, and uh, I really appreciate you inviting me here. It's funny you're telling the story about the kitchen, and I tell people the best breakfast I ever had anywhere, and I've been traveling around the world, was Brazil. Because there were fruits there I never had, and I'm, you know, trying to be healthy. So I was like in in in, uh, in fruit heaven there. It was great. It's like when I was in, like I was in Norway, and they had like 20 different types of herring, and I love herring, so, you know, but it, it was a beautiful city, and uh, it was really a nice time being there. I can't believe it's 20 years ago. 20 yeah. years ago, wow, wow. 20 years ago, we are celebrating that with the, our interview today. And yeah. thank you so yeah. much for being here. Your experience is, as an analyst is invaluable to future mm -hmm. generations. Thank you very much. So, Steve, let's begin. You have presented candlestick analysis around the world. So tell us about your beginning as an analyst, up from the start. How did you begin your career? What's your background before the candlesticks? Very interesting. Uh, my first job was I worked at a company uh, called Industrial Commodity Corporation. They're not around anymore. And this was at a college. And I, um, back then I really wasn't into technical analysis. I have, a, I have an MBA in finance and investment. So uh, it was more, uh, fundamental stuff. So what we used to do at that company is they would have clients like we have a company called Arrow Shirts. I don't know if it's still around Kodak when Kodak used to make film. So Kodak wanted to know when to buy silver because film, you know, needed silver. Arrow needed cotton. So what this company would do is recommend when to buy these commodities. And so what we would do is write reports, like uh, if we talked about copper, I would write a report about the copper production in Zaire. Uh, what was really interesting is whenever the, and we would send them out to the clients. Uh, 
But whenever a client called, they would, and they didn't tell the clients this, they would give them advice. They would open a chart book and they would be looking at charts. But this was back in the 70s. And, you know, technical analysis then wasn't really as popular or as uh, looked favorably upon back then. So essentially what the company was doing was using these really thick reports as kind of a, uh, you know, making it seem like they're doing a lot of work, but they really gave the recommendations on charts. And that's when I got interested in technical analysis. So, uh, you know, back then this was the seventies. So obviously nobody knew about candles. So then I went to work for EF Hutton and Merrill Lynch and I became a technical analyst and I was giving trade recommendations to the brokers and the world's really changed. Back then we had something called the hoot and holler. You'd pick up a telephone line and all the commodity, all the offices around the country would have a, a, a speaker. So we'd give trade, I'd get trade recommendations. So anyway, one of the companies I worked with, uh, there was a jet and this was back in the eighties, uh, had a Japanese broker. She dealt with Japanese clients. And I went into her office just to talk with her. And she had this really thick chart book and they were candlesticks. And, you know, since nobody in the West knew about it, I certainly did not. And I said, what's this? She said, this is our traditional form of charting in Japan, candlestick charts. And I said, this looks really interesting. So uh, I always had, no matter what job I had, I always had something else I did at nighttime. So I was a tax preparer, I was a certified financial planner. This was beside my day job. So I always had like to have a backup. So this was a new project. So I found somebody who was going to Japan. Uh, he was an American. He happened to be a trader and he spoke Japanese. So I told him to buy every book he could on candlestick charts. I paid him myself to translate them. Uh, it took him about a year to do. And then I had to organize all the translations into the different patterns. And, you know, Japanese do a lot of things by metaphor and analogy. Uh, so I had to read about Japanese military history. Anyway, it took me about a year to put everything together. And then I wrote my first book. Uh, I think it was 89 or 90. It was revised in 2001. Then I wrote some other books. So as of now, I think it's been translated into 21 languages, my books. So including Brooklynese. <laughs> nice. <laughs> which is the tough, which is the toughest one. <laughs> Well, I was just to ask this uh, about this question. Let you almost answer it. Most of the traders learn candlesticks by reading your books. Mm -hmm. But how did you learn? So you learned because you bought his book and translated. You never had a teacher. Right. I bought about, well, he bought. I told him to buy every book. So he came back with about 15 books, uh, 15 candlestick books in Japanese, and I paid him to translate them. Now, many of these books, all these books, it wasn't all candlesticks. The Japanese have others. Uh, Japanese, uh, other uh, things, but in all the books, they had Western technicals also. They knew all our, all our Western technical techniques. Uh, some of the books, in fact, they have like the candlesticks on the cover and a moving average on it. So it's not as though I had to have them translate all of them, the Western stu stuff, which I could tell by the pictures because I couldn't read Japanese. You could see a moving average. So I said, you don't have to translate this. And then the issue was uh, some of the Authors had a little different take on the what the signals were. They weren't all kind of the same. Um, the candlesticks really started in the late 1800s, early 1900s. Unfortunately, because of World War II, a lot of the original information was destroyed during the war in Japan. So a lot of it, you know, it's it just word of mouth, but there's no solid sources. And so what I did is I went with the patterns the definitions that were the most strict so for example one of the translations in japan it, uh, we have a gap they call it a window so if it's a gap up it's a rising window if it's a gap down it's a falling window so one of the authors would say uh the window can be momentarily closed but it's still valid so i had to think about what did that mean so to me it meant and based on a lot of markets i looked at momentarily closed means not closing under it. You know, get through an intercession. If you're looking at a daily, it would be intraday. So it really has to close under the window for it to be uh, 
a broken support or resistance areas area. Nice. So, Steve, tell us what are the legs of your method called trading triad? Could you explain it better? Right. Trad is Latin word for three. And uh, as good as candlesticks are, that we also need to take into account two other legs, Western technicals. And I mentioned that the Japanese, all they use Western technicals in combination and then money management. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, risk management, uh, risk reward. And for example, when I, uh, when I did my trades, they would track them. I forgot which company it was. One of the companies I worked with, uh, might have been Lehman or Merrill Lynch. Anyway, they had a track record of all the uh, the technical analysts who gave track record, track rec, uh, trade recommendations. And I was doing the research on the candles, but I didn't let them know about it. And I was giving the trade recommendations based on the candles because I wanted to see how well they worked. And you know, I I had the best track record, but that's not the important part. The important part is I actually had more losers than winners. So a really important part is the money management, you know, defining your risk, keeping that risk really tight. It's unfortunately it's human psychology. We don't want to admit we're wrong. It's very hard to get out of a losing trade because we think, oh, the market's going to reverse right after I get out of it. And of course it never does. So a lot of it is, so that's the three legs, candlesticks, Western technicals and money management, including risk reward. That to me is really important. Steve, I was reading your book, Beyond Canon 6, and one story caught my attention. You see the Red Homer's book from 1755, I think, called The Fountain of Gold, The Three Monkey Record of Money. Mm -hmm. You do not understand the reference to the three monkeys on the title and at the cover of the book. Right. Well, first, now for us? first of all, I want to thank you for being the one to buy my book. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're the one. You're the one who bought that book. Uh, but, but yeah, this is this is why it took me a year once I got the translations because a lot of the references were based on Japanese culture, Japanese military history, uh, and for that, for that one, I had to do a little research. And what it was in. Buddha, the Japanese were the first to have those three monkeys, see no evil, speak no evil, talk, uh, see, hear, and speak no, right, right. It was on the top of some Buddhist temples. And so what the author was implying, so it took me a little, long time to figure that out, what the author was implying is uh, to be a successful trader or investor, you have to be like those three monkeys, you know, see no evil, just focus on the charts. Don't listen to what other people are saying. That is a big big mistake and don't tell others what you're doing, you know? Uh, so that's what that was about. Yeah. And uh, so that's, that's, that's what that reference was all about. And that's what made this so much fun. Also, it was challenging, but uh, it was just really fun writing the book and talking about the different terms the Japanese use, you know, the three monkey record of money, the three Buddha pattern, what we call that in shoulders. Uh, it was just a lot of fun and it made, I think, my book, my seminars, my education, a lot more entertaining also, rather than just cut and dry. There's a lot of fun stuff in it also. Great. And Steve, you are the only one who, who could answer this. After all, who invented the candlesticks? Was Homa? Could you tell us more about the candlestick history? Uh, again, that's a lot of this because so much was lost during the war. So this is all kind of word of mouth. Uh, but what happened back, it, for, it, for, it's been so long since I really wrote the book and made reference to it, but from what I remember, you know, when you write a book and you proof it and you reproof it and you reproof it, you just don't pick it up again. You just get so tired of it. Anyway, from what I remember, uh, the Japanese used to trade rice and they had the first futures market, rice futures market, and Homa made a lot of money in that market. Uh, but back then, I don't think they had highs and lows from what I remember from my, uh, my research. It was just, you know, closing prices. Later on, they put in highs and lows, but the candlesticks, they had, the Japanese had bar charts. So they used to have a line chart, like we still do here. Then they had bar charts, which we had here. 
but back in the early 1900s, the early 20th century, they switched over to candlesticks. We never did that in the West. So, uh, so I would say the candlesticks really started probably in the early 20th century. Of course, I need to ask this for the hour audience. Which candle patterns seem to work best and worst for you? Could you list some of your favorite and powerful patterns? Um, that's where the triad comes in. So, uh, I mean, some of the ones we could look at the relationship of the candlestick signals to see the more powerful ones. And when I say powerful, candlesticks don't get price targets. So that's why we always have to use Western technicals in addition to candlesticks. That's we. That's part of our education. We look at candles and we also look at Western signals. Uh, and so, so I've been using candles probably since the late 1980s, but I've been using Western technicals since 1975. So, uh, so like a bullish engulfing pattern, which is a, depending on your charting system, a green, a bullish candle wrapping around a, a red real body, or it could be, you know, black wrapping around white, depending on your charting system. So if the second candle is bigger than the first one, it's usually a better indication of a market turn. Uh, but to me, the more important aspect is if a candlestick signal confirms a Western signal. So, for example, a hammer is a good candlestick signal. But if I had a hammer confirming, and I use mainly horizontal support, I, I just keep it really simple. Uh, we have something called the KISS principle. I don't do you have something like that in Spain. The KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S. So, uh, I mean, Brazil. Uh, so. Um, if I saw a hammer confirming support as a bullish compared to a bullish engulfing pattern not confirming support, I'd be more aggressive on the hammer. That brings in the second leg of the aspect. The third leg is we always have to look at the risk reward. So for example, let's say we have a bullish engulfing pattern, green wrapping around the red. And we say, oh, it's great. There's a really long green real body where the close is much higher than the opening. So there's a bullish engulfing pattern. The problem is, what if the, the, the bullish engulfing pattern, say this level is 100, it, it completes it at 100, and the first resistance is 101, and the low of the bullish engulfing pattern where you set your stop is 90? You, do, you don't do the trade. I do, and what we recommend thinking about is if it's a bad risk reward, if the market pulls back to near the low of the bullish engulfing pattern, then you could think about, I call that my if then rule. If the market pulls back, then you could think about buying it because you're much closer to the stop out level and you have a much better risk reward. Of course it may not, it can, 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 uh, can continue going, but that's why uh, we normally don't recommend trading with candles in isolation, one thing, and secondly, making sure you correctly understand the candlestick signal. I can't tell you how many traders and investors, they'll see the green wrapping around the red after an uptrend, and they say it's bullish. A bullish engulfing pattern, most of the candlestick signals are reversal indicators. So we need a downtrend to reverse. So, uh, you know, it's, it's correctly understanding how to use the candlestick signal. Nice. And Steve, uh, do candles work in any markets and any time frame? What markets and what time frames have you done your analysis for? Most of my trading is done on a daily chart, uh, but I know a lot of it. We have students from 85 countries that use all the time frames. I think one of the more important things is rather than asking which markets the candles work best on, which market, what time or what time frame, what time frame your personality is most suited to. If you're the type that likes to do research and think about it, you don't want to trade a five minute chart. Because if you do, you're going to get totally burnt out. So step one was realize what kind of trader or investor you are, what kind of time frame. Do you like that quick action? Maybe then a 30 minute chart is, is good for you. Uh, but as far as time frames are concerned, some nuances like with very short intraday charts, you get a lot of doji, so I'll tend to ignore the doji. But uh, my real expertise is really on the daily, and then I'll look at a weekly to get longer term trend. Um, but we, again, we have students from uh, all over the world, and they use all time frames. But 
I can't tell you it works better in a 10 minute chart in Apple. It may work great in a 10 minute chart in Apple, but awful in a 10 minute chart of Microsoft. That's something that, you know, the markets you trade, you'll have to see for yourself after you get the correct education. So Steve, how do the Japanese use moving average? Same way we do in the West, exactly the same thing. They have a, they have a cross of what we call a moving average crossover. Uh, like a, if the faster moving average crosses under the slower one, they call that a dead cross, a dead cross. If a slow, a fast moving average crosses above uh, a fast moving average, they call that a golden cross, but exactly the same thing. They have a three Buddha pattern, same thing as our head and shoulders, exactly the same way. Great. Could you share a curiosity for your, our audience? Can you explain better the eight to 10 record session pattern? Right. And that's, uh, I wouldn't waste much brain power trying to remember that. There's a lot of really rare, like this is an abandoned baby pattern. It, it, it catches people's attention, but they're so rare. Uh, the eight to 10 is really the market moves up eight consecutive sessions or higher highs, uh, higher closes actually, or record session lows. And the theory is that the market's getting overbought or oversold. But once again, we know from experience the market can get overbought and just stay overbought. Just stay overbought. I, I like using Bollinger Bands for that to see if it, you know, gets to the top end of the Bollinger Band and maybe it starts getting under it. Or if it starts getting overbought with the record sessions, if you get start getting, uh, let's say you're going from higher higher highs and then it kind of rounds out, you're getting the same highs. Uh, it's telling us the momentum is easing. Uh, but as far as uh, eight or ten record sessions high just mean eight higher highs or eight ten record highs and or higher highs or i should say closes and uh ten lower lows or lower closes mm -hmm. so steve do you think candlestick charts still work in the days why do people misunderstand candlestick patterns what trader could analyze candlestick patterns properly well i think some of the things i had mentioned not looking at risk reward not combining them with technical uh, signals, looking at candles in isolation, not taking trend into account. Um, you know, one of the things I'll mention at the end, we have a link we'll, we'll, we'll give uh, your students, but they'll be able to get my, what I call the four common and costly mistakes almost every trader makes with candles. So I go into more detail about, you know, what, what they are, uh, but, you know, essentially, forgetting about risk reward, not adding Western technicals to it, looking at candles in isolation. Um, so those are probably, and, and misunderstanding of the candlestick signals. Like I mentioned before, people think it's a bullish engulfing pattern, even if it's after a rally, it's not. Do you monitor the risk reward rate of trades using candlesticks? How Alexa, do you set the risk Alexa just reward said this, Alexa just says, that's not nice. I have no idea what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no Actually, worries. my phone said it. That's not nice. Did I say anything insulting? <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay, well, I'm sorry. What were you saying? No, no worries. Uh -huh. So, do you monitor the risk reward ratio, ratio of the trades using candlesticks? How do you set the risk reward aspect? Good. If there's good. a hammer, do you buy it? Yeah, these are, oh, I was going to say good question, but they're all good questions. Uh, what we'll normally do is we'll use the high and the low of the candlestick signal as a potent, potential stop out area. So let's say, again, let's say a hammer. The low of the hammer is 100 uh, and the market closes at 105. Uh, so if, if our target and candles don't get targets, you know, I'll look at recent highs to get a target. Uh, so 100, um, you know, the, the low of the hammer is 100. It closed at 105. And maybe let's say our target is 120. So we would set a stop under uh, probably at 99, 98. So we're risking five or six to make 15. So we look normally, or I do, um, my, the people in my company um, who do their own trading, they may have look at, they look at a different risk reward. I look at a two to one reward to risk ratio. Uh, but so uh, or if there's a shooting star, use the high of the shooting star as a resistance area. Uh, or if there's no candlestick signals at a resistance area, not all the reversals are going to be called by candles. I'll look at a prior high and a prior low. But again, subjectivity, let's say the low of the hammer was 100, but 
thinking of a daily chart, let's say a week before that, the market got down to 99 and then rallied and then got down to 100. Would I place my stop under the 100 or would I place it under the low of the 99 because it would be so close? So I would place it under there. So a lot of nuances, uh, you know, that's important to understand. Do you prefer the close of the, the low of the bar? I will do, I will, I will normally do a close, but what I'll do, because the problem is if you wait for a close, by the time it closes, it could be well under our stop out level. So what I will do is set my risk reward to determine what my risk would be, even if it gets there intraday. So you said you used to uh, use the body and band sometimes. So what else do you look at you use as other indicators besides sharp patterns? Do you use volume, you use stochastic, RSI? I keep it really, I mean, years ago I used to, I just keep it really simple. It's work, it, again, it depends on your trading style. It works really well for me. I'll use Bollinger Bands to gauge overbought, oversold, to see if potential reversal signals. But pretty much all my trades uh, are made if a candlestick signal confirms a, a horizontal, not not an angle trend line, because there's so much subjectivity. If you make trend angle trend lines, if they uh, that if a if it's if it confirms a support or resistance area, and I'll use bearish candlestick signals because most of us are not going to short unless we're trading forex or uh, options. Uh, so I'm. I'm going to focus on the, on the, on the buy side, on the long side. So if a, if a candlestick signal confirms a support area, step one, just horizontal support. Step two, if it's a good risk reward, that's all I'll need to look at. I will look at the longer term trend. I looked at a 20 and the 50 day moving average and if the 20 is under the 50 day, uh, then I'll say the longer term trend is down. I would be less aggressive. I'd place a lighter position. If I'm going counter trend, I would still go long, but I'd place a lighter position because I'm going counter trend, longer term trend, but is up. I'd just be a little bit more aggressive. So, you know, that's my, that's just my style. Nice. How and mm -hmm. what criteria and tools do you use for trader setups? For trade, that's what I just mentioned. If a candle signal confirms a support or resistance area and it's a good risk reward. A horizontal support area. Can you think something else that people think they know about Japanese candlestick that they really don't? I think 90% of what I talked about today is that <laughs> not thinking about the risk reward, not adding what and not asking Western technicals. What's nice about a video is that you can go back and listen again. Uh, you know, not not forgetting forgetting about Western technicals, risk reward. Um, um, looking at the candles in isolation, not not in relation to a trend, making sure it's that um, you know, like a bearish engulfing pattern has to come after an uptrend, a shooting star should come after an up uh, an uptrend, and so forth. But I think the two main things is not adding Western technicals and risk reward. And one of the great things about the candlesticks and the reason it was so easy for them to be popular so quickly is because it uses the same data as a bar chart open high low and close you give up absolutely nothing by using a candlestick chart it's not as though say as though we're saying hey use these instead of traditional western technical analysis we say use this in addition to because you're just getting more insight into the battle of who's winning the bulls and the bears between the bulls and the bears great and steve where can our viewers find you on the internet and social media please right. do some advertising uh all right so we, we have a link here and thank you for your help on showing me how to share a screen uh so like i was saying i normally use zoom so i don't use this so here's let me know if it works so what we've done is you see the website so um the link is well don't worry about this link it's it's actually let me just type it in here we just made this a hyperlink, but it's triple W camelcharts.com. Welcome. That's what they would type in. All right. And you hit that. Right, right. And so what we're going, what we're doing is we're giving you a lot of free stuff. Uh, and you get, you're getting free resources, resources. We'll give you a free consultation. This is really good. Even if you're familiar with candlesticks, it's going to reinforce to make sure you're using it correctly, a quick start program. And we give you this also, my most important trading rule, 
uh, and I made reference to this before, the four common and costly mistakes almost every trader makes, and all this, all this other uh, great stuff. And of course, we have some nice testimonials. Uh, of course, these are all my relatives. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but even John, I, I know you guys interviewed John recently. Uh, John was nice enough to give me this um, uh, very nice uh, testimonial. Coincidentally, I mean, we had this on here, and you know, I, uh, and uh, you know, when I was going over your website, I saw John was there. So, uh, so that I would strongly recommend doing that. Some great things. It's all free. So it's uh, again. Let me just uh, get this here. You know, so it's just welcome. And when you when you type this in, it just we just wanted to make it a shorter link. That's what the link is. And you don't have to do the HTTPS. We either, it's just www.camelotrust.com backslash welcome. So, uh, yep, yep. And the sooner you do this, the sooner you can start learning how to use candles correctly. It's all free. So Nice. Learning is like a rowing upstream. Not to advance is to fall back. This quote opens one of, one of your books. So, Steve, what's your final advice would you offer to younger traders? Um, younger traders is make sure since every chart now is in candlestick chart. It's you know, it's so funny. Like when I'm watching a show and somebody just meets me, I said that's because of me. You know, it's a candlestick. If I'm watching a financial show, I say that, that's it's kind of cool. That's because of me. Uh, to if they're going to start using candles, which they probably will, because every chart is candlesticks to un make sure they understand how to use them correctly and the free resources is a great way to start with that uh that link to candletrust.com backslash welcome it's a really great way to start and then from there they if they decide they can continue their education but there's a lot of really good stuff on there for new traders or even experienced traders of many traders who are, or investors and i mentioned investors because i also uh use it for my investing um you know all these strategies can be used for longer term investing if you're using a weekly chart that um, they have a solid foundation to under make sure that they're, they're using it correctly for them correctly nice and we come to an end of this astonishing interview with mr steven neeson we want to thank you all our viewers for joining us on this journey i want to say thank you very much steve for sharing all his expertise we hope his dedication inspired other traders around the world right and i do expect to be paid for this by you sending me a bunch of fruit yeah <laughs> that fruit <laughs> What was the fruit? What was the fruit that I liked? I want to see if I can get it. Yeah, the name in Portuguese was Jaca. Okay. And, and I I think the translation is jackfruit. Jackfruit. Okay. All right. I've seen that. Okay. And I said I liked it. And it's fruit, and it's a uh -huh. huge fruit. Is big. It's like almost sixty centimeters, and it's heavy and it's matty. Okay. Very. Okay. I'll look for it in the street of jackfruit right here in front of my house. <laughs> I'll look for it. it is you know, I'll look for it. Trees, you know, huge trees. Okay, all right. I'll look for it in the supermarket or I might be flying yeah, down there. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 Okay. Very good seeing you again. Uh, and uh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, you are welcome. Okay. You know our birthday to the people. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you, everyone. We see you in the next interview.